What's going on guys? Today we're doing a pulse width modulator installation, 60 amp hour PWM, 100 amp hour max and a box build. So let's get cracking. I'm using a resin cord solder today for all our flooded solder connections. All our cabling will be 6 org marine cable. So let's get this job done. Here I'm just heating up the Anderson terminal before flooding it with solder and adding my cable. I've decided to go with 50 amp hour Anderson connections for this build. This is my preference, may not be yours. But this will work for me. For the trolley motor, it will be red Anderson plugs and for the power, it will be black 50 amp hour Anderson plugs. So when I'm connecting them, it'll be easy as it'll be red on red, black on black and happy days. The upside to this connection is if the PWM fails while I'm out on the water, I can just disconnect the PWM and connect the motor straight to the battery. So I'm just going to let this build play out and I'll come back to you all later.
And so I just whipped up this gutter guard cover. I replaced the steel cover that was on the PWM as it conducts a lot of heat. This will stop the wires from falling down onto the resistors and causing possible damage. So this job is almost done. So the biggest benefit to a PWM pulse width modulator is that on the trolling motor head unit, speed one draws the same current as speed five, just that the current is turned into heat and released through the resistors in the motor. So it uses a lot of draw on speed one. With the PWM, you can control by pulses how much current is released to the motor from 1% to 100%. So the savings will be quite noticeable on the battery depending on how you use it. Also in the pulse with modulator you have 100% speed in reverse compared to the three speeds reverse on the trolling motor head unit. So I've just gone and added Loctite to the four connections. These two are to the PWM. This is the positive and the negative terminals to the battery. So the red Anderson plugs are for the PWM and the black Anderson plugs are for the battery. What I haven't added in is the meter because that's just a current draw and to me that's just a waste of battery. I'll just gauge this the power by the speed of the kayak. I've had it out, the trolling motor out once before. Top speed was seven kilometers an hour. And all I want to do is troll, which is around three to four kilometers an hour. I have a fan, a 12 volt fan. And if I do experience some overheating issues, I'll wire this 12 volt fan in promptly. Now the Good point for the trolling motor is that I can connect my trolling motor directly to my battery if the PWM fails. So if the PWM fails, I can just disconnect the red Anderson plug on the trolling motor and plug it into the black ends and plug on the directly to the battery. So I've used a Railblazer adapter connection for this join for the kayak and a Railblazer adjustable adapter which can rotate, spin, twist and you can adjust the angle. So I can adjust the angle on the trolling motor box. So this is where I did all my soldering. So I had the garage door fully open and lots of ventilation. It's pretty windy out there in the last few days. So just gonna have a quick look at my battery box. Now the battery box has a 16 amp resettable circuit breaker. But because the trolling motor can draw up to 50 amps, I added in a waterproof 50 amp circuit breaker just on the positive line to a 50 amp hour Anderson plug that connects directly to the motor. And that's the battery box.